to call this, oh gosh, I'd like to call this evening's King's uh, Local Schools Board of Education regular board meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Morrow, could you please call the roll? Ms. Phillips? Here. Ms. Groff? Here. Ms. Cowan? Here. Mr. Skirl? Here. Mr. Belfrom? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, I have a motion to approve this evening's agenda. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Morrow? Ms. Callan? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Groff? Yes. Mr. Skirl? Yes. Mr. Belfrom? Yes. Next on the agenda are the reports and presentations for this evening. Mr. Sears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Belfram. First report and presentation we have tonight is school board recognition month. So in the state of Ohio, the month of January is designated as school board recognition month across the state of Ohio. We are extremely fortunate um, in our community to have five elected members of this board that are tremendous advocates for public education, tremendous servants for our students and very supportive of our staff. Um, we, on behalf of our uh, entire administrative team, all of our teaching staff, paraprofessionals, teachers, support staff, we're really fortunate to have the five of you serve our students in this community. And so we can't thank you enough for your continued communication, advocacy, support, um, and we're better off because of each of your service in our school district. And so on behalf of our team, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, thank you for your service. Thank you for giving all of your time, energy, and effort uh, to, to supporting our students across our district. We know that time takes a lot, and we know that takes you away from things that are very important to you. So um, as a token of recognition this evening, um, Mrs. Gould, who um, I'm going to give a big shout out to Dawn this evening. She has um, gone above and beyond and has taken an opportunity to recognize each of you in a very unique and special way. And so Dawn is extremely talented and did a lot of great work behind the scenes that most of you Actually, you probably don't even know what's going to happen next. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> you should be a little nervous, but it's real. I think I I didn't know. Yeah, I don't know a lot of things are going to happen before they do either. So it is definitely one of her strengths. But it's a it's a great honor to work alongside of each one of you. And I think I think um, you will really appreciate what Dawn has put together this evening. So thank you, Dawn. And we will you will need to probably turn around to be able to watch. Board members identify local citizen control in the city of the United States. They volunteer hundreds of hours and an immeasurable amount of energy to ensure that our schools are providing the best education possible the children of our community. For all of their dedication, we are taking this opportunity to show our team for the education, our appreciation, during school board recognition and honor. Um. I can't do what? Come on. Thank you. 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 Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, makes me proud. Uh, I've always known he had minion. Uh, now everybody can see it. No, And I, I just wanted to thank OT for everything you did for me in person, especially in the past year. I know there's been a lot of changes for everybody. Uh, I am so incredibly proud of everything that you're doing for the community and for being with my serving on the board. Uh, you always make your decisions based on what's best for the community, and you're always doing your research on what topics are trending or what you're going to be talking about at the next meeting. And I really respect you for that. You were one of my biggest role models. The way that you look out for the people you love and say that for what you believe in is incredible. I love you so much, and I hope that you can be able to do it with anything else. There are two people in our lives that impact us from our first words to our last. There are even fewer people in the world that impact generations. Peggy Phillips, mother Ryan and I, or better known to men as Mrs. Phillips, has done just that. Caregiver, lifelong learner, educator, mentor, teacher, coach, colleague, and countless of her time she has helped to do justice to the infinite impact she has had on so many people. From her guidance with the early beginnings of the Contemporary Center for Reading Instruction, to early schools, caring by the U.S. Department of Education has helped save the mind of the suspects. Is always creating the needs of our students, parents, teachers, schools, community, family, and the At the end of the day, a certain of appreciation, we can be certain one very important is to strive for education greatness in the manner of baby dollars or more as a great life. Hey, Mom, I just wanted to wish you a happy school board appreciation month. You know, when I heard you were running for school board back in around 2017, I think, I, I knew you would get it, and I knew if you got in there, you'd do a great job with it. You're one of the hardest working people I know, and it's been great to see these last few years. You throw yourself into that position and uh, do some good for the community and for school. And even though I don't know these things anymore, I can tell you're doing a great job. So keep it up. I love you, and I'll see you again soon. Hi, Mom. Congrats on your school board appreciation day, week, month, whatever it is. Uh, I have to say, as a family, we're so proud of your involvement with the school board. It means so much to see you involved um, in making decisions for not only students, teachers, um, but the district and community, and it makes a huge difference. Um, so to move to Kings in 1999, we've been involved in uh, students in some capacity, whether that's having three kids in the district at one point or another, uh, working for the monkey day, or being involved with the opportunity of um, a coach, a coach, a referee coordinator, a tournament coordinator. But, I say I am so proud of you um, for all that you do and for you keep up the good work. Love you, Mom. Yeah. 
have a five minute recess. <laughs> that was dirty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, whew, and I have to be the one to talk after that. Um, yeah, next on the uh, presentations, uh, the lovely ladies here to do the Rose Report. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just kind of messed up right now. Uh, if you would, ladies, please. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So as you guys know, I'm Grace Jones, and this is Faithlin. First of all, before we get started, I just want to say happy birthday, Mr. Sears. We, you know, sorry you have to kind of be here on your day, but, you know. All right. You can take it away. Um, our outstanding artists. So um, you can come and relax at Paint and at Cookies and Canvas on February 2nd, and you can also come to Paint With Me on February 8th. And you can see the posters up there too. The band. The band is performing at the OMEA Professional Development Conference on February 3rd. They were one of the three bands that were chosen out of the 160 to perform at this conference. National Honor Society. During the last day of exams, NHS partnered with Student Council to feed lunch to our staff. Through a Racing Canes fundraiser last month, NHS raised over $275 for a Kings Unites program. Spanish National Honor Society. Our Spanish National Honor Society students are holding a supplies drive for the upcoming trip to Montreal. Oh, not Montreal. Um, Monterey. Thank you. <laughs> um, they're collecting essential supplies that are needed at, um, at the orphanage Casa Hogar or, oh God, sorry, in Mexico. The trip is led by some of our amazing high school staff members. Clubs. Members of the French club got to make their own crepes at their last meeting. And the German club celebrated Weihnachten, the German Christmas celebration, and they got to taste German holiday treats and watched a video that Fra filmed at a Christmas market in her hometown at Erfurt, Germany. Athletics. The Lady Knights basketball team has a record of 10 and 3. They play West Claremont January 19th, or yeah, January 19th at the Castle. The Men's Knights basketball team has a record of 12 and 2. They play West Claremont January 20th, also at home. The bowling team has a record of 5 and 4 as well. Um, the swim meet or the swim team competed in the coaches classic meet this past weekend. It's the biggest high school meet in the country. Freshman Maya Swikert broke the two meet records in the 100 back and the 200 back. Junior Ashley Bender broke the meet record in the 100 IM. Many other athletes competed at finals, which is extremely difficult feat. Other swimmers at the finals were Sam Crum, Kate Luckett, Melanie Schweikert, Tyler Sukovecki. Cooper Tinsley, Ethan Lemer, Will Ballard, Seth Broderick, Ethan Hoyne, and Beckham Najum. The Kings wrestling team came in fourth at the Taylor Pool Tournament. The Kings, or the Kings gymnastics team will compete at the Centerville Elk Invitational on the 21st. Make sure you go out and support our winter athletes. Kings Career Quest. King's Career Quest is a program run by the counseling office that works to help seniors find their best first step after graduation. The 20 to 25 students in the program evaluate career interests and pathways, job shadow at local businesses, and work with community partners like Warren County Community Services, LEAD Training, and Sinclair Community College. A recent success story is King's 2022 graduate Aiden Crum, who was a highly motivated senior in the Career Quest program. Wingate Heating and Cooling offered to host 
Aiden for a job shadow day and ride along with the HVAC technician. Wingate offered Aiden a position after graduation, and he has been working ever since, already adding several certifications and qualifications to his name. Congratulations to Aiden. And that's all. Thank you, ladies. They do a wonderful job. They yes, really do. do. <laughs> it's one of our favorite things of the meeting. It is. Welcome to come every week if you like. <laughs> uh, next on the agenda for this evening is uh, public participation. But uh, seeing we have no one signed up, we cannot proceed with the agenda. Next on the agenda are the consent approval items for the treasurer. Uh, can, that includes the work session and regular meeting minutes uh, from December 13th, financial items, the energy purchase, public records log. Mr. Morrow, did you have anything to add, sir? I don't have anything to add, but if the board has any additional questions. Move his items, please. I'll, I'll make, make, go ahead. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Mr. Skirl? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Groff? Yes. Ms. Callan? Yes. Mr. Belfrom? Yes. Next on the agenda are the approval items for the superintendent, including the field trip for the King's High School Winter Guard, uh, field trip for the King's High School cheerleading team. Uh, Mr. Sears, did you have anything to add to that on yeah. your 49th birthday, sir? <laughs> I, I will just add that um, the we have added the cheerleading request for Orlando in February, um, and the cheer team has uh, and the opportunity to compete at the cheer nationals for the first time in 20 years. So we're excited for that opportunity for our cheer team. That were there any other questions? I have a motion to approve the uh, items this evening for the superintendent. I'll make that motion. Second the motion, Mr. Marr. Ms. Groff. Yes. Mr. Belfrom. Yes. Ms. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Skirl. Yes. Ms. Callan. Yes. Next on the agenda are the approval items for the assistant superintendent uh, concerning HR and business. We have the personnel items, the land sale, and the land purchase. Mr. Spinner, Mr. Lucky, was there anything you needed to add? Nothing to add this evening, but happy to entertain any questions you may have. That may I have a motion to approve uh, these three items? I'll make that motion. I'll uh, second it. Mr. Morrow? Ms. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Groff? Yes. Ms. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Skirl? Yes. Mr. Belfron? Yes. Uh, next on the agenda, the fifth item, uh, the bus proposal update. I believe this is Mr. Lucky and. Yep. Uh, last thing on there, number five, uh, our current contract with uh, National Express or Peterman uh, ends this June. Uh, so we went out, um, started late October, uh, did an RFP for quotes uh, to provide our transportation service. Uh, those all came in at right after the first of the year. And as you can see, um, our partner Peterman uh, financially came back in uh, with a very uh, competitive rate. So we will stick with Peterman moving forward for a five-year contract. We're working through the language of that right now. Uh, but uh, they came in with a very favorable offer financially for us. Uh, the difference that you'll see in that uh, that quote is a little over 10% from what we're currently paying. It's about $375,000 different. Any questions from, from that process? So like you said, it was a five-year? We're working on a five-year contract for that. With the amount of investment they need to do in uh, equipment and buses, uh, typically you look at a five-year for transportation. Okay. And how many different contractors were we looking at there? 
We reached out to four. We were able to receive quotes from three. These are your 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 bigger vendors locally for us uh, that we can actually go back and see what their performance has been in districts. Um, North America decided not to quote uh, for for whatever reason that was. First student's a big name that you see locally. They're 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 based out of Cincinnati. Right. Um, in those quotes, was there discussion on different tiers and how much money we could save there? We we did we did ask those questions in the in the RFP itself. Um, first student, for example, would only quote it as a six hour uh, minimum, so they. They don't think they can staff it other than doing a three-tier model. Uh, but those are questions. So um, after this process, uh, really all the vendors came back with, uh, from a staffing perspective, uh, they would prefer that. Um, but we're currently working with Peterman on what are our options uh, to see if we can make something like that work. No. How much would these numbers change if we would go to a different tier? That's what we're working on right now. So now that we've gone through the, the nitty gritty of this portion of it, um, through the Versatrans system, they have the ability to go in and reroute to see what those times could look like. Uh, so next month, I'd like to bring to you guys um, what their recommendation could be. So that way we can start fine tuning if that's an option that we want to take a look at. So they'll have some uh, savings. Uh, estimates, as well as some start time, things that we can look at to see if that's a, a good option for us. Yeah, we would absolutely like to see that uh, next month, because I think we're all kind of curious how those tiers would impact start times, mm -hmm. and then what that that actual cost savings would be at that three tier, and how that would impact. You know, we had some concerns the last time we went through this, as y'all remember, with even with staff and you know, their desire to do a lot of supplemental work after school and things happening before school and how it would impact that. So, yeah, I think, I, I think I'm speaking for all of us. We, we would definitely like to see that deep dive next month and see those particulars. Uh, it was pretty, it was pretty telling through the RFP process of the vendors coming back to us. One of them only quoted going that route just from a staffing perspective. So um, staffing's the probably the biggest thing from an interruption standpoint this year. Um, we've had multiple occasions where we've had to combine routes at schools and you had to send a bus back to get kids. And that's a not a really good feeling to make that call and the experience for the parents. Um, it's just it's just not the the service that we want to provide. Right. Yeah, I mean, I would even just be curious to know if, I guess it's a one-tier system that we have now. Two-tier. Two-tier, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Is that even tenable going forward um, to, to, to speak to the things you mentioned? I know we had a lot of that at the beginning of the year. Um, that, that's something we can even realistically continue to do. So I guess I'd like to know that. <laughs> I mean, without without the issues that we have, like, can we, we make that happen? That's something I'll, we'll, we'll dig deep into over the next month and, and get back to you. Okay. And then question for you, Mr. Morrow. Um, I know we were anticipating that this was going to go up and you said 375,000 a year. Was that built into the five-year forecast? I was pretty close to having it built in. It was a little bit higher than what I expected. Um, as far as when I built into the forecast, I was hoping through the RFP process that um, it would drive that down a little bit, um, but it was in that range. So this isn't out of bounds. Okay. But if we were able to make some changes, um, potentially the three tier where we saved money, it is a savings going forward. I guess because, that's my question. Correct. Is it a genuine savings? It's a genuine savings because we've we built in a cost increase. We just got a 10% increase that was substantially lower than anybody else. So if we are able to shave some of that with a, with a different tiering system, then it's, it's absolutely savings. Okay. Thank you. Just to clarify the quotes here is for the existing two tier model. Okay. 
we thought that that would be the easiest way to show an apples to apples comparison um, mm -hmm. when you're dealing with the tiers and the length of routes it it gets pretty finicky so we just wanted to show this is what we do right now and um, we did some modeling with alternative tiers and alternative timings peterman was the best value every time um, but we're not to the point to be able to to show the board of education tonight this is what it would look like in three tier this is two right. tier so we used what we do right now as the baseline for comparing quotes okay and that's what we'll we'll see next month then right mr mm -hmm. lucky okay yeah welcome question on these figures so are these the annual or is this the entire five-year contract length annual annual okay it's that big of a number and i will add that it's a 10 percent increase in year mm -hmm. one um, but the contract has a built-in three percent year after year so we're we kind of lock in for the next five years at a at a three percent a year which is pretty reasonable when you when you think about yeah what's happening in the world right now. Right. I think thinking about the levy and trying to make it last as long as possible, I really look forward next month to seeing what type of savings we might be able to have to stretch things out. And, and uh, if it's feasible to make all of those pieces line up and work correctly. Mm -hmm. Any more questions regarding the bus proposal? Thank you, gentlemen. That right, we will move to the approval items for the assistant superintendent regarding the educational programs. Mrs. Martin and Mr. Freeman, we have the billing report, senior internship program, the MOU for St. Clair's Community College. Can't talk after that presentation earlier. Uh, Kings High School. College and career catalog. Uh, was there anything else uh, that you wanted to add? To well, number three and number four, the MOU and the college and career catalog are new. They weren't on the work session last week. So I don't know if Matt wanted to address them at all. Um, first of all, with the college and career catalog, um, that is really just the description of um, all the courses that will be offered at the high school. The only change to that is what we did talk about at the work session, and that's the addition of the um, internship program. So all the other courses um, are the same from last year. And the MOU from Sinclair is an annual um, approval that we ask you to um, do for us for students that participate in College Credit Plus program there. And that came in on Wednesday morning. <laughs> so that's why it was delayed. So we appreciate you um, taking a look at that today. Is there any changes from last year on that? To the College Credit Plus? Mm -hmm. uh, no, there are not. Same. It is the same. Mm -hmm. Just a random question. Well, not so random, but are the businesses that we use for the career quest, like, are they in scope for the internship as well? Okay. You probably said that last week, but I just making sure I remember that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they are. Perfect. Uh, any more questions? That may I have a motion to approve? Uh, the assistant superintendent educational program items. I'll make that motion. Second the motion, Mr. Morrow. Ms. Callan. Yes. Mr. Belfrom. Yes. Mr. Skirl. Yes. Ms. Phillips. Yes. Ms. Groff. Yes. Next are the items presented by the board. We have the Ohio School Boards Association Effective Board Award. Uh, questions or edits to the uh, application? Any concerns? We should go for it. But if we go, we win, we all have to go and get the award together. <laughs> <laughs> questions, Mr. Morrow? Oh, excuse me, may I have a motion to approve our application, move forward? I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Skirl. Yes. Ms. Groff. Yes. Ms. Cowan. Yes. Mr. Balfour. Yes. Next are the legislative updates. Uh, Mr. Skirl. All right. So just a few items I wanted to touch on today. So um, 
First, uh, governor activity, Governor DeWine, he announced that the School Safety Center has finalized the state training requirements for school staff to be armed on school grounds. Um, and he had also, in the past month, uh, signed several following several bills into law. I'm not going to go through all of those. It's included in the meeting minutes. So if you wanted to go through and read those and let me know if there's any questions. Um, then moving on to State Board of Education, they, uh, the State Board postponed uh, selecting a search form, search firm to assist in hiring a state superintendent. Um, and additionally, they passed an amended resolution voting uh, regarding the proposed federal changes to Title IX. Um, and then Paul LaRue is president and Martha Manchester is the vice president, as is elected by the State Board of Education. Um, and then there are also several items that the Ohio Department of Education, well, I went down, yeah, that um, really some following cost studies uh, that were required under Senate Bill 310 to be completed by the end of last year. So those are all completed and they're listed there as well. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Scroll. Any questions for? All right. And with that, May I have a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting? I will make that motion. I was going to say I have oh, the. I'm sorry, Peggy. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Phillips. Instruction. Please, please continue. I think we just need to put it on the because I keep <laughs> that happen. So can we hold Mrs. Callan's motion? And okay, Mrs. Phillips. First off, the name change for King's Preschool and Child Care to King's Early Childhood Center has Principal Mary Beth Fossey pleased that our board and community recognize the quality of teachers bring to educating the youngest students. The name change to King's Early Childhood Center aligns with the focus on the importance of early childhood education and honors the quality of our teachers and support staff in preschool. So she was very pleased with that. King's Junior High Theater students will entertain the audience in their production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown on January 26th, 27th, 28th, and also uh, on Saturday, the 28th, there'll be a, a matinee session. So. Um, they're all practicing hard, even as we speak probably this evening. And their hope is that um, they can pack the high school auditorium during each performance. We have all heard uh, the saying, it takes a village. I wanna share one example. King's High School teachers, Rhonda Allen Har Harmon and Pete Moore had a vision uh, for a tribute for the late Mr. Gonzalez, a mural designed by two students, Ella and Maya, a group of students, including Savannah, Kendall, Maya, and Lucy, painted on and off all summer long the mural that is now finished, and a 2018 graduate Shane Bauer built the bench that's placed in front of the mural, and it's across from um, the classroom that Mr. Gonzalez taught Spanish in. Also, thinking that we approve some field trips, here's another example of students being able to get their hands right into looking at what might a career look like when a group of Lisa King's government and law students went on a trip east. They visited sites in New York, including the Empire State Building and the Brooklyn Bridge. They were off um, to Philadelphia. And that's one of the things, if you wanna think about making government and law come alive, what a wonderful trip to have that happen and to think about future career choices. Art students from Stacy Hoffert's um, art class collaborated with first grade students in Stephanie Rigby's class to publish a book. The book is called Ocean Animals. All of the illustrations, of course, were done by the art students. And if you had a chance to look at any of those books, they're absolutely beautiful. And the first graders did the writing of the story. 
So it was a great collaboration. Thank you, Mrs. Phillips, and I'm sorry again. I'm going to work on that. Mm -hmm. Pat, I have a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting. I will again make that motion. I'll second the motion, Mr. Morrow. Ms. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Belfrom? Yes. Mr. Skirl? Yes. Ms. Groff? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. And everyone have a great evening.